Wow, I can't believe you found this. Oh, look at me, I was like 24 years old. This is not gonna make me cringe. I'm gonna watch this all day. Hi, I'm David Harbour and Esquire has asked me to watch a bunch of uh, clips of myself for a segment which is called I Hate Watching Myself. Thanks Esquire, because I do hate watching myself. You wanna see my physical discomfort as we watch this? Cause you will. Okay, here we go. No, oh, Jesus, me acting. Thank you. Hopper is by far the greatest character I've ever had a chance to play. I've loved him since the minute I read him in the pilot episode eight years ago. But the show is called Montauk, and I really like that title. And I remember we started getting into it, and they had to make changes. And one of the things they changed was they changed the title to Stranger Things. And I remember saying to the Duffer Brothers, that's a terrible title. That'll never stick. Montauk will be a huge hit. Stranger Things, no one will watch that show. And now, even when people go like, oh my god, I love Stranger Things, I'm always like, oh, that title. I mean, I guess what I remember most about shooting this scene is I was so out of shape and busted. And this was like one of the first scenes up. And I was like 280 pounds at this point or something. My knees were shot. There's a scene where I come out the door and I'm just running down towards camera and my belly is like moving in front of me independently of my own torso, like a bag of ferrets. Yeah, I really love that shot. I'm so proud of that shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the internet loves that one, that like Jim Hopper winds up in Russia and then after 20 years becomes the Red Guardian or something and he's still in prison. But yeah, it was just a random coincidence, internet. I'm just like randomly cast as two dudes in Russian prisons. I did shoot Red Guardian first and so I did send the Duffer Brothers a bunch of images of my costume and the set, I would walk around my cell phone surreptitiously taking pictures going, don't make the Stranger Things season four prison look like this. We spent a lot of time, like I shaved his head. I also like got real skinny. I did everything I possibly could to make them wildly different, but the internet will not let it go that I'm the same guy in a Russian prison. So thanks a lot for that. Area. Elliot Hirsch. <laughs> Elliot from the newsroom, look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Ah, oh, so young. I just tend to get beat up a lot. Yeah, I'm surprised to see that in newsroom. I'd forgotten about that. I do not like to spend time in what is known as the chair, which is the makeup chair. I really get annoyed and fidgety and uh, cranky. And so maybe that's why these writers think it's hilarious to give me these things that'll make me spend more time there. Aaron has a tendency to make all of his characters have integrity and intelligence. And I really wanted Elliot to be the dummy of the newsroom and he would not dumb him down. I would occasionally say smart things and like have integrity and like want to do the right thing. And I was very disappointed in Aaron for taking me down that road. <laughs> I don't want any trouble, okay? So he's gonna scooch up that chimney. You know, this is a wild movie. When it was first pitched to me, I think my initial reaction was that no way, this is insane. What I love about this movie is that it's a full on action movie like Die Hard, but it's also a full on Christmas movie that will make you believe in Santa Claus. When I read this movie, I was like, there's no way you can pull that off. You can't have a violent action movie and a movie that makes you believe that Santa Claus is real and that goodness exists. And I think we did it with this one. So enjoy the insanity. I've always been a shipper. From the very beginning, I've always been a chopper shipper. Yeah, it was a long time coming, you know. Winona and I, since like eight years ago, when we started this thing, we talked about Joyce and Hopper, what happened to them back in high school, how they sort of were together and how they kind of fell out. We had all sorts of ideas of intricacies and all sorts of stuff. I just adore her. I adore what she's done with the character. In the midst of this show that is so much about pain and loneliness and being a weirdo and being an outcast and even this horrific upside down world full of monsters, there's this really nice Dickensian sort of thing with Hopper and Joyce being this like kind of mom and dad who get back together. 
and there's something kind of beautiful about that. It did seem, though, at the end of the season when we looked out on Hawkins burning, I don't know how much opportunity there's going to be for <laughs> Jopper makeout scenes in the future. We'll see. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of crisis and a lot of things to be solved, but I do know that there's certainly some things we will definitely have to pay off, and the Duffers are responsible in that way, and they will pay those off for you. I'm sorry you're not going away anymore. I know it was important to you. Yeah, this was an amazing scene for me career-wise. You know, it was like me in a scene with Kate Winslet when I had just done kind of plays, really. We had a whole dance routine that we had to choreograph and work through. And, you know, I thought I was really rocking it. Like, I thought I was really just giving her all this energy and all this, like, sexuality and passion. And after we did this dance routine, one of the producers came up to me and said, wow, David, that was amazing. That was really sad. <laughs> in terms of Leo, he really taught me about film acting in that, because I really wasn't a film actor, you know, I was more of a stage actor. So I would really go full out on most of the scenes. I watched him structure his energy throughout a day, and he knew when his real tight close-up was coming in, which was the meat of a scene. We were doing the wides, I remember thinking like, oh, he's not that good, actually. As the camera got tighter on him, he just became so alive and like so extraordinary. And I was like, whoa, this guy's really good. Good boy, Alexi. You named the pig after me. You don't see the resemblance? Those women are so fun. It was just so rich. Like that scene around the dinner table, a lot of it was improv. We would just go off. I've rarely had experiences where I've just been able to like let go in front of a group of people like that. And just the warmth on that set. We had like a really intimate time together. It felt like a family. And I love those women to this day. Hey, detective, you were joining us. Wow, I can't believe you found this. This is so good. They started on soaps. This is not gonna make me cringe. I'm gonna watch this all day. Oh, look at me, I was like 24 years old. <laughs> yeah, as the world turns, my first on-camera job, Officer Ron Shanks, truly, some of the most amazing work on television soap operas. Like, you shot an hour of usable tape in a 12-hour workday, which means like one hour of your workday was a television show that was going to be broadcast. That type of turnover was unbelievable. People worked so hard and were so good. And if you ever see people acting on a soap opera that's at all, at all good at all, it's as a result of something extraordinary. So, I mean, As The World Turns was acting boot camp. Those people were pros. Thank you. I've, I've uh, genuinely hated watching myself. 